Let's talk about the man on my shirt right here, Mr. Larry Elder. He's getting a lot of momentum. He was on Tucker Carlson last night. You know, obviously there was this ridiculous incident with the, with the monkey woman and the egg, and it's like you don't want anything like that to happen, but at least it did bring attention to his campaign. That's good. Obviously the Democrats are nervous because they're bringing out the big guns, Obama and Kamala, and I think Biden is doing something today, supposedly, and as I said yesterday, look, if it's Gavin Newsom, Barack Obama, and Kamala Harris, and now Joe Biden versus Larry Elder, me, and Scott Bayo, I like our chances, we're gonna be all right. Um, so first, I wanna show you uh, these two headlines. This is, this is just really like, if you wanna see how perverse, really perverse and dishonest the mainstream media is, these are two of the headlines from the Los Angeles Times. This is the Los Angeles Times, the same Los Angeles Times, who, by the way, as you know, said that Larry Elder is putting, is the blackface uh, on white supremacy, okay? So look at these two headlines. Now, you all know what happened the other day. This crazy woman that you're seeing there with the pink gorilla mask, she started screaming uh, racist remarks and cursing at Larry, and a whole bunch of other people were saying really horrific things at Larry as he was just walking through Venice because Venice has become a drug den and a homeless encampment, basically. Uh, so she's throwing a egg at him. She then assaulted one of the, um, one of the security guards. And look how they framed it. Larry Elder cuts short Venice homeless encampment tour after hostile reception. And then look at the second one. Now, first off, the first one, hostile reception, the implication is that he's getting a hostile reception like from sane people, right? Like, like he got there and he said something that then they were hostile about. Um, but these were crazy drug addicts and maniacs. But the import, what they're trying to do is frame it as that he's somehow controversial. That, that first one's not terrible, actually. But I want to show you the second one, which is really just, it's just remarkable. LAPD is investigating altercation involving Larry Elder at Venice Homeless Encampment. What does that sound like to you if you didn't know this story? It sounds like Larry Elder picked a fight, probably with a homeless person, at a homeless encampment. That is so deeply dishonest. It's, it's just, it's pure fucking bullshit. That's what it is. And the, L, the, the LA Times at this point is a white supremacist newspaper. I can only deduce that between you know, basically calling him a white supremacist, lying about this violent attack, not saying that, you know, wh where are all their op-eds about the racist base of the Democratic Party that's throwing eggs and attacking a, a black candidate? You know, where, where's all of that? So I guess the LA Times is a white supremacist newspaper. There's sort of no way around it. Uh, that being said, I still am feeling good about what's happening with the recall, and I get it. I, you know, I really want to make this point clear. Well, two points here, actually. First off, I get it. The deck is stacked against us. This is, this is largely a democratic state, and modern liberals, no matter how many times you whack them in the head with reality, uh, it's very hard for them to go, oh, all of the reasons the state sucks, the high taxes, high regulation, bad schools, bad roads, homelessness, drug use, et cetera. It's, it's hard to believe that that could have anything to do with the way I've been voting, right? Uh, this is like sort of what I would say to Bill Maher if he's ever brave enough to put me on the show. It's like, you rail against all of these things all day long. You're a good liberal, right? My good, my good liberal friends, what happened to my IDW good liberals? They've all gone silent on everything that matters. Uh, and I do want to give a complete exception to that on Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson, who, who have been as good as ever. Uh, but the liberals have just completely, completely collapsed. Um, so let's uh, also show you, because we're talking about the media and Larry Elder here, this, this video from yesterday. Now, I know some of you have seen this yesterday, uh, but Rose McGowan was on the show. Rose McGowan is the girl who, in effect, single-handedly took down Harvey Weinstein. She walked through the fire, said, this man raped me. It, it started uncovering all of the other horrific rapes and sexual assaults that Harvey Weinstein did. Two years ago, he was the biggest bad guy in America, right? Like, that was the thing. It started the Me Too movement you know, believe all women, all of that stuff. Well, now Rose McGowan is coming out and saying that Gavin Newsom's wife, Jen Newsom, three months before the Harvey Weinstein story broke, when they knew it was gonna break, that she contacted Rose on behalf of Harvey Weinstein's lawyer to see what could make the story go away. And she's saying she has receipts. Do you think that maybe that's worthy of the news covering it right now? That the California governor who's under recall, that his wife was shilling for Harvey Weinstein to silence uh, someone who was sexually assaulted by Harvey Weinstein? Like, do you think that maybe that's newsworthy?
Maybe? Well, first, in case you haven't seen it, here's Rose. Jennifer Siebold Newsom, I think that is her name, yes. She called me. And she set up a meeting with me to meet her somewhere in Brentwood. And I actually went and I got very like creeped out and I saw her sitting where I was supposed to meet her and I looked at her and I, I turned around and went back into my car and drove away. She wanted to meet me. She Wait, reached when out is this? to me. When is this, just to this be clear? This is about uh, six months before the New York Times article on Weinstein that I set up broke. Okay. And she called me on behalf of a Theranos board member, the... Uh, lawyer for, um, longtime lawyer of Hillary and Bill and, um, Clinton and Weinstein, one David Boyce. So this woman, I don't know, some blonde lady named with the last name of Newsom cold calls me and it's like, David Boyce wants to know what it would take to make you happy. Six months before the Weinstein story. What it would take to make you happy, which you took as for those that might be playing along a little bit slowly? I, I don't know. I don't know if it would be fiscal remuneration. I don't know. I, I like absolutely nothing would make me happy. What would it take to make you happy? This guy was raping you for years, raping all kinds of people. He's the most evil man in America. The entire system uh, tells you how awful he is. You know, he should burn in hell, blah, blah, blah. Believe all women. It started an actual revolution in this country in some respects. Uh, but now, that's, this story is not being covered. Now, I do want to uh, clarify two things here. Uh, in that video there, she said uh, six months before the story broke. She later clarified with me yesterday after we taped the show that it was three months before the New York Times ran the Harvey Weinstein story. So that's just, it's not that important, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, and also, if you watch the full interview, she, originally Jennifer Newsom wanted an in-person meeting with Rose. Rose actually went, saw her sitting there, and then didn't go, and then this was all done on a phone call. Rose is saying she has receipts, and I'm not saying I have, or have not seen receipts, um, but where are you, media? Where are you, media? Or Gavin, Jennifer, come out and say she's a liar. Is she a liar? Where are you, Gav? Come on. <laughs> 